This is Dr. Charles Lin presenting a case of arthroscopic hip labor repair with cord decompression for AVN of the femoral head. It is estimated that 20,000 to 30,000 new patients are diagnosed with avascular necrosis of the hip each year. Patients who present with avascular necrosis are often younger adults. Bilateral presentation is common at 80% of the time. Furthermore, it accounts for 5-12% to of total hip arthroplasties annually in the United States. Although total hip arthroplasty has been successfully used to treat hip AVN, hip preservation has been shown to improve outcomes and quality of life while maintaining the native hip joint. While there are multiple risk factors that have been found to be associated with avascular necrosis of the hip, including trauma, corticosteroid use, excessive alcohol consumption, coagulation disorders, among others, the exact etiology and pathogenesis of osteonecrosis still remains unclear. It is thought that cell death occurs as a result of rounds of disruption of femoral perfusion through mechanisms such as vascular endothelial damage and microvascular thrombosis. AVN typically follows a progressive course. There are multiple classification systems for avascular necrosis of the hip, including the Steinberg classification, the Japanese Orthopedic Association classification, and the ARCO classification. However, the FECOG classification continues to be the most commonly used. Stage 0 is preclinical and preradiographic and is suspected if the other hip has definite disease. Stage 1 is preradiographic, but the patient presents with groin pain. Stage 2 presents with radiographic findings of increased density, diffusely increased porosity, and cystic changes, and can present with subchondral fracture, also known as a crescent sign. Stage 3 is characterized by flattening of the femoral head, and stage 4 demonstrates osteoarthritis with joint space narrowing. This is a case of a 35-year-old male who presents with bilateral hip pain, left greater than right. The pain was insidious in onset and began 9 months prior to presentation. It is constant and sharp and radiates to the knee. Trial of physical therapy and tramadol provide a limited benefit. He has Crohn's disease and previously used steroids for a year, and is now on Humira. On exam of the left hip, he was able to flex up to 130, extend to 15 degrees, internal and external rotation were 35 and 45 degrees respectively, and he was able to abduct to 45 degrees. He had posmin impingement signs and pain of flexion, adduction, and internal rotation, and with flexion, abduction, and external rotation. These are the preoperative radiographs, and the AP pelvis and 45 degree done view of the hip demonstrate cam and pincer impingement. He has a lateral center edge angle of 53 degrees and an alpha angle of greater than 55 degrees. Also noted is a proximal crossover sign. MRI demonstrated avascular necrosis of both femoral heads with extensive marrow edema in the left femoral head extending into the proximal shaft. In the left hip, there is AVN underlying the articular surface anteriorly and centrally, 3.7 by 3.7 cm in size and 1 cm in depth. Additionally, an anterior labral tear can be seen. There are many treatment options for avascular necrosis of the femoral head, and selection of the treatment modality is partially based on the stage of disease. Continuation of non-operative modalities was an option, but avascular necrosis of the hip typically follows a progressive course. Prior to collapse of the femoral head, core decompression can be performed to attempt to preserve the femoral head. Hip arthroscopy can be performed in conjunction with the core decompression to address additional hip pathology and to help guide the core decompression. With more advanced disease, arthroplasty options such as hip resurfacing or total hip arthroplasty would be the preferred options. Given that this patient had earlier stage disease, as well as mixed impingement and a labral tear, we proceeded with hip arthroscopy with arthroscopic assisted core decompression. After hip distraction, the patient was prepped and draped in the standard fashion. First, bone marrow aspirate was extracted from the anterior iliac crest. Hip arthroscopy was begun through the anterior lateral and mid anterior portals. Through the mid anterior portal, a partial capsulotomy was performed between the two portals. The labrum was inspected, which demonstrated detachment from the 11 o'clock to 1230 position and associated chondral delamination. Inspection of the femoral head demonstrated softening over the anterior superior femoral head with a chondral fissure, and the area was marked with the probe. The acetabulum adjacent to the labral tear was exposed, and rim training was performed with a 5.5 mm burr. Two number two sutures were passed around the torn anterolateral labral tissue and secured to the acetabular rim using two anchors. Traction was released and the peripheral compartment was inspected. Femoral neck osteochondroplasty was performed with a burr using fluoroscopy to ensure that adequate cam resection was performed. 
Next, attention was turned to the core decompression. Under fluoroscopic guidance, a guide wire was placed externally to determine the optimal entry site and an additional incision was made. A ball tip guide was then placed on the anterior superior femoral head and the targeting device was advanced to sit solidly on bone. Using the targeting device, a guide pin was inserted through the lateral femur and advanced into the femoral head into the AVN lesion to subchondral bone under fluoroscopy. The cannula from the targeting device was then malleted into the lateral femur to allow for instrument exchange. A 5mm reamer was then used over the guide pin to the appropriate depth under fluoroscopy. Note that the reamer does not go all the way to the end of the guide wire, but rather to 10mm from the tip of the guide wire. Integrity of the cartilage was checked. The expandable hand reamer was then inserted to complete the core decompression all the way through the necrotic bone. The reamer was started at 6 mm in diameter with a toric limiter and gradually expanded to 18 mm while checking to ensure that the cartilage surface remained intact. Once this was complete, the tract was irrigated and the mix of BMAC and demineralized bone matrix was injected. The stylet of the needle can be used to ensure that all the BMAC is delivered. Calcium phosphate graft was then used to backfill the decompression more distally. The guide can be slowly withdrawn as the calcium phosphate is delivered. Again, the stylet can be used to clear the needle. Care should be taken to insert the stylet slowly since the pressure can damage the friable cartilage. The guide was then removed, and number 2 suture was then passed through the medial and lateral leaflets of the capsule and tied to complete the capsular imbrication. Postoperative rehabilitation was initiated in four phases. In the first four weeks, the patient was made 50% weight-bearing with crutches and a hip brace to prevent external rotation, hyperextension, and favor, but flexion as tolerated was allowed. For the next four weeks, the patient was weaned from crutches and range of motion was progressed with the goal of full weight-bearing by week six. Strengthening and stretching exercises were initiated with physical therapy. Weeks eight through 12 focused on progressive hip range of motion with progressive lower extremity and core strengthening exercises. In months 3 to 6, the patient progressed to plyometrics and treadmill with a return to sports at 6 months. At 6 month follow up, the patient reported that his pain was improved, and on exam, he had negative impingement signs and a negative Faber test. Reports of series of arthroscopic assisted core decompression remained limited. Ellen Ryder and colleagues reported on 56 hips in 53 patients with an average fall of 33 months who underwent arthroscopically assisted core decompression for avascular necrosis of the femoral head. They define success as no arthroplasty, no reoperation, and no radiological progress of the affected hip. They found an 86% success rate for patients with Steinberg stages 1 through 3 and saw that patients with an increasingly advanced stage had increasing rates of treatment failure. Nizal and colleagues reported on 11 hips in 8 patients with an average fall up at 7 years. They reported that during the procedure, 8 underwent labor repair or debridement and 7 underwent microfracture. They also saw that patients who had more advanced disease were more likely to undergo conversion to total hip arthroplasty. In terms of cell-based therapy for treatment of avascular necrosis for the femoral head, a systematic review found limited evidence in the literature. However, all 10 studies in the review that reported patient-reported outcomes reported improved outcomes in the cell therapy group compared to the control group. On an aggregated basis, the cell therapy groups had lower rates of radiographic progression and lower THA conversion rates. There are a few pearls and pitfalls for this procedure. Care should be taken to preserve the articular surface. A combination of fluoroscopy, arthroscopy, and a guide can be used to determine the optimal entry site on the lateral femoral cortex. Multiple passes with the drill should be avoided to reduce the chance of a fracture. Arthroscopic assisted core decompression allows for visualization of the joint surface to avoid joint penetration during the procedure, and it also allows for more comprehensive and accurate localization and treatment of the vascular bone lesions. Concomitant debridement and management of any intraarticular pathology may also be addressed in the same setting. Concurrent use of fluoroscopy and arthroscopy together allow for accurate targeting of the lesion. The femoral head should be visualized during expansion of the reamer to ensure maintenance of the articular surface. When injecting the biologics, it should be injected slowly since the cartilage is extremely friable. Thank you for watching.